It's seven o'clock in the morning and it is boiling. It's like a new world, a new country. <laughs> I was talking to the site agent yesterday and uh, he's like, production's been so low uh, this year, obviously, because we're not really building. Uh, even if we want to, we can't because of the, how the weather's been. I don't know how's the weather been for everyone else, but I'm going to have to definitely start thinking about going things a different way if um, if they want production to keep going. If, you know, uh, we've got... I think GSQ might have... Um, might be in there for getting Harlow. And I think there's like 10,000 homes for the Hill Group. And uh, they want it built by Harlow people. And I um, think they're going to be trying to open up a few site-ready schools, which I'm going to hopefully be involved in. And uh, if we want to get these houses done and it's going to rain how it has been, I think they need to start thinking about uh, wrapping it, uh, putting a roof over the top. Because, I mean, I know obviously it's going to cost a bit more money, but if productivity is what they want, then it's the only way it's going to happen, isn't it? <laughs> right, anyway... Uh, I'm with Ed today. I was, you know, I was sort of keeping an eye on him. Right, let's go get stuck in. Right, Ed, say hello to my friends on the social media platforms. This is who I'm working with today. He's uh, very slow, but he's neat and tidy. So, well, you are a bit slow, aren't you? Well, no, I'm using them. He's putting them on backwards already, look. Uh, this was a bit of his work yesterday, nice and neat, look. Took him long enough though. Ed's in my bad books now, so I'm working with TC instead. He's quicker, he's quicker anyway. I've been rushing around a bit this morning, but the first thing you want to do is put your gloves on. Oh, I already got <laughs> he's already got his gloves on. <laughs> Look, tape, there, boom. Leave it there all day. Then you just go right like that, uh, up, done. Put it on your hip. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You should, what you want is a little five meter one that you don't really know is there. And then you just, yeah, yeah, just doing that, yeah. All you want to do is just string your line on now, yeah. Don't do that cut. Just do yourself nice perps the whole way through, yeah. And then just see what your cut is. It might be 10 mil smaller, it might be 10 mil bigger. But you, you can start from that end now. Just pin your line in, string your line on, and just run it in. Muck's a bit wet as well. Yeah, so... Yeah, well, worth spreading and... Uh, Flattening off, yeah? All the way through. Spread it all the way through. Uh, right. 275. Get in there, you <clears throat> Slop. Hello mate, what's the plan today geese? You want me to finish this one and go up there? Yeah. yeah, 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 sounds good. The muck is quite wet, so it, it might help just to get it all out the whole way through until it dries up a bit. Are you uh, still struggling to get down to the line? All right, well in that case, take back what I said and do, and do enough for one block at a time. It is sinking though, yeah. See, when if you if you lay a bed, right, sometimes it's worth veeing it out, sometimes it's worth flattening it off. Like, personally, if I've got wet muck, I like to flatten it off like that. Because it helps, it helps it dry out a little bit quicker. And then if you go all the way to the end. Yeah, if you go all the way down to the end, it's giving that little bit of chance to go off a little bit. Yeah. If you do uh, like one block at a time and you're trying to bump up, it don't work. But all blocks are different. Like some blocks come up big, some come up small. 
depends how they've been made. Yeah, you have to make a decision uh, on in that moment, really, whether you need a big bed, a tight bed, or if you want to run the whole bed out. If you don't, it just helps it sit better, doesn't it? Yeah. But you, if, and then you might go on another wall tomorrow, and the the, the, the manufacturer has made them a little bit big. And then if you run the whole bed out, you can't get down to the line. You have to make a decision. All right, so we've got a first wall in. TC smashed in, didn't ya? How many did you get down in that one? 25. 25, ain't bad. I said to TC, I said, are you gonna come watch me at Super Trail then? <laughs> what, was it, what was your exact words? Can't be bothered. Can't be bothered. <laughs> he can't be bothered. I thought, you fucking prick. I'm out here teaching you a trade and you can't even be asked to support me, you wanker. <laughs> It's hectic up there. We're waiting for my blocks to turn up. They've got like a specially made wall tie. Like, they're not made usually. It's like a two part wall tie. You put them in, because the cavities are like fucking, I don't even know, I haven't even checked, but looking at it straight off the eye, it looks about 250 mil wide. Oh, I've never built a fucking cavity that big. But yeah, uh, we're waiting to get up onto the other lift, but we're waiting for the scaffs. Scaffs are nearly complete. They've opened up a section, so they've sent some hoddies up there to smash out some loading out. And uh, I think me and TC are going up there. We was just going up onto the other lift, just to wait to get up onto that lift. <laughs> oh, fuck you know. It's, uh, it's trouble, it's a small area. You can't get too many materials there, but you got to keep to a program. What do you do? You, you flood it. It's a typical thing where you flood with blokes, but ideally you don't want that many people there because it just doesn't run as efficiently, does it? But it's just not the way the cookie crumbles on most sites. Uh, you know, we all want perfect conditions, but yeah, it's fucking hectic up there. That is hectic. Anyway, we have some grub. What have we got today? Some leftover chicken from uh, yesterday's roast dinner. Lovely. I love, uh, a, little, I love a bit of cold cold chicken, especially the drumsticks and the wings. Oh, it smells banging, just put loads of salt on it. Nice bananas. I've got me raw honey, lovely. Right, in fact, I better give her a call because she'll be fucking, oh, I've already got a missed call. There you go. All right, look, this is, this is five minutes. This is a fresh tub come up. Look, look at it, fucked. This is what we're having to deal with. Anyone else have problems with this shit? That'll be gone off again in about two minutes. I'll have to knock it up again. Horrendous shit. Absolutely fucking horrendous. It shouldn't be allowed. It should not be fucking allowed. See that? It's drying up already. It's drying up already, look. Look, look. 
They shouldn't be allowed to use it. Should, they should not be able to be able to sell shit like that. Yeah, so I was working with TC today. Good lad he is. He's a bit older than most of the others. I think he's like 29 or something. So, and he was a hog, he was a hog carrier for him before he went on to this apprenticeship uh, malarkey. And uh, yeah, he's got that go in him because he's already had that sort of work experience, so to speak. And he knows what the crack is about getting on with it, basically. Uh, where a lot of youngsters these days, sorry to say it, and you know, it's no one's fault but the, the generation that brought them up. If a generation of children aren't working hard or they're not doing well, you know, it's not them to blame, is it? But anyway, that's besides the point what I'm on about. Uh, yeah, so Gary has like um, a group chat with uh, which I'm in. Uh, it is a GSQ group chat with all the apprentices, uh, a few of the trainee instructors, including myself, and everyone has to take pictures of their work to make sure it's up to, up to scratch and put down the quantities, uh, which I think is a really good thing because you'll, you get to see the progression. The only thing about it is that I don't think anyone is actually, you know, some of these, some of, some of them, I think, are putting what they want rather than what they're doing, uh, and no one can actually tell uh, unless someone goes around counting with them, you know. Uh, so that is the only thing I think, you know, like to, for me today with TC, I, I was running in with him, so I'd mark up the. Uh, block to where he got to and he actually laid today uh, If he finishes the course which I left him on I think he'd lay about 170 blocks, which is you know, and he, he's a grafter. So, you know, you got Ed the other lad who I'll be with tomorrow who's in me bad books. He's a bit slower, but I was watching him the other day and he does check his work a lot which is a good thing to start with as long as you're when you're checking it you're using your eyes to check it as well so you you a good bricklayer will be able to look at a wall and go yeah that's that's good that's good enough look good to the eye that's good uh, it might not be perfect but 
If it looks good to the eye, it's good enough. Good block work. Well, that's what my old boss used to say anyway. But, you know, I was telling TC about, uh, you know, once you've jointed your wall, once you've brushed your wall, then put your level up it. Because, especially like in the winter time, you can find that when you've jointed it and you've got wet blocks and it's a bit windy, uh, you know, even if you've already done four courses, you can like joint it and the concaveness of your jointer and the compression against the joint will actually make your wall want to curve in towards you. So it's always good to joint it, brush it, stick your level up it after. Uh, even leave your line up, you know, and you can have a quick check underneath under your line um, because it's, you know, nothing worse than when you've built a wall, you've checked it and then you've come away from it and you've gone to build on top and it doesn't cut right. And that can be a number of things, like the walls are, you know, you've built too much in one go and it's it's slowly but surely overnight just started to lean over and it's 10 mil out by the next day. You know, I'm a, I'm a person that likes to go four courses, four and then four, because you can't build the whole wall in one go anyway. So personally, especially with concrete, I'm a four and four. I like to build four courses or up to the underside of window everywhere, let it go off, and then I'll go round again and I can put my window frames on because it's gone hard and it's much easier than trying to balance it on fucking wet work. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I'll uh, see you in tomorrow's.